This is the Valley Today. We're following local breaking news right now out of South Moorhead, where police are investigating in a neighborhood just south and west of the Village Green Golf Course. This here is a live look near 32nd Street and 38th Avenue South. One viewer telling us they heard that it was a murder investigation. However, Moorhead police are not confirming any of those details right now. And throughout the morning and even now, you can see there's an incident command unit on scene as well as a unit from the state BCA. So we're continuing to work on getting those details again on this breaking story. Be sure to stay with us right here on Valley News Live on air and online. 602 just about now on this Friday morning. Other major story today. It's a first alert weather day. A lot to go over here. Good morning, Lisa. Good morning. Yeah, we're getting all of that winter throws at us. We're talking snow. We're talking wind and the cold to follow as well with that ice wind that we're going to be feeling here today. Here's a look at the latest alerts that have been issued this morning for us. First of all, a winter weather advisory covering the entire Red River Valley. So everybody needs to be on the lookout for some worsening conditions today. The start time on this is staggered because it's going to be affecting us from west to east. So some of us it's going to take a little bit longer for the impacts to move in, but the advisory in effect until midnight tonight and we're looking at gusts getting up to about 40 miles per hour. So combined with some light snow and we're looking at slick roads, low visibility, just issues out there with that blowing snow happening here. So worsening as the day goes on. Now tonight the the uh, snow eventually ends, but the wind and the cold stay with us and a wind chill advisory will be taking effect tonight lasting over Overnight and into Saturday morning for most parts of the valley. You can see a few places not included. Doesn't mean it won't be cold for you, but these areas under the advisory uh, will be most likely to see wind chills in the 20s to even as low as 30 below uh, by the time we get into the nighttime hours tonight. So first wind chill advisory of the season, first kind of dangerous cold affecting us here in the valley. So here's a look at the latest. We've got overcast skies around the region. Some areas where we may be seeing a few flakes right now, but overall it is a pretty quiet start to our our morning. Again, this is something that will be getting more and more progressive as the day goes on. So not too bad to start. Good time right now to maybe take care of some things outside, maybe run some errands before uh, the roads become worse today. It's 24 degrees right now in Fargo, so still OK temperature wise, but we're seeing that north wind kick in for some. Grand Forks, Devil's Lake reporting temperatures in the teens. That's where we've seen that wind turn northerly, and that's going to keep cooling us down here today. And speaking of cooling down, look at our uh, temperature graph for today that just keeps sliding as the day goes on. So warmest temperatures of the day, we've already reached them and we've been sliding since then. We'll have some partly cloudy to mostly cloudy skies to start this morning. And this is for Fargo. Keep in mind the snow moves in sooner than that in other parts of eastern North Dakota. But for Fargo, right in that noon hour and beyond, we'll see our snow chances increase. The wind, of course, increasing through the morning. And so conditions are going to get tougher as the day goes on. So stick around. We'll get to the details on timing for you, how much snow we'll see, and when we might get some improvement coming our way all in just a couple of minutes. A lot to go over. Yeah, a Lisa. lot. Thank you, Lisa. <laughs> Changing gears now, a suspected gang member in the Cass County Jail accused of brutally beating another man and threatening to kill him weeks ago in Fargo. Police believe 18-year-old Daniel Sis is involved with the 2800 Striker Boys Gang, which detectives say is a subset of the Gangster Disciples. He's now in jail on charges of aggravated assault, terrorizing, and street gang crimes. A video of the November 16th assault shows that Sis was kicking and punching a man in the head multiple times while writing the number 28 in blood on the victim's chest. Valley News Live has obtained these videos, but we're not showing them because they're so graphic. Coming up tonight at 6 on Valley News Live. We're talking with the Fargo police about the gang and its connection to the metro. Police in a small Idaho town say a kidnapping suspect from their area is believed to be in North Dakota, but they're not sure where. Five-year-old Michael Vagan was last seen near his Fruitland, Idaho home in July of last year. Police believe that he was killed, but they have not yet found his body. Police believe four people are involved in his disappearance. Two are already in custody, but police still looking for two others, including 30-year-old Brandon Shirtliff, who they think is in North Dakota. When we finally reach the conclusion of this investigation, and I can assure you that we will, all of those who have knowledge of Michael's disappearance and have failed to report or hindered our investigation will be pursued. There's a moment in time to do the right thing and bring your information forward and cooperate. And that moment in time is now. 
You heard it there. If you have any information on the case, be sure to call your local law enforcement. A Fargo man accused of raping a seven year old girl. Court documents say 18 year old Draven Untersayer admitted he tried to have sex with the seven year old child. Police were called to the girl's home after she told her mom about the incident. Documents also go on to say that Untersayer had previously sexually assaulted a cat inside his home. A bill looking to stop a massive rail worker strike before it starts is now headed to the president's desk. The Democratic Senate passed the legislation yesterday with an 80 to 15 vote with Republican Senator Rand Paul voting as president. That means he doesn't vote for or against. The House approved that measure on Wednesday. President Joe Biden says he will sign the legislation into law despite its lack of paid leave coverage that some Democrats were demanding. Nearly 15,000 Minnesota nurses are ready to hit the picket lines again this year, starting on December 11th. They're protesting what they say are unfair labor practices, including a lack of sick days and severe understaffing. The vote impacts 16 hospitals in the Twin Cities, Duluth, and two harbors. Well, schools in the Valley were facing a critical shortage of substitute teachers even before the pandemic. But now some college students are stepping up to the plate to help combat that problem. Valley News Team's Kellen Harmon shows us how they're getting firsthand experience in a different kind of classroom and helping teachers along the way. Everybody loves a win-win, but what about a win-win-win? That's what's happening with a partnership between universities and elementary schools for students. VCSU and NDSU have teamed up for some time for their education program, but this school year, they're taking the classroom to the classroom. They'll learn about it in the class, and then they'll go into the classrooms and see what our teachers do, really going from theory to practice. Seniors in the program are taught lessons right here in the elementary school before heading next door and applying those lessons hands on. It just prepares you a lot more because I mean, I think of the last couple of years just being in the at, on the college campus, it's been really great. The switch is doing a project and then being able to say, okay, let's go show students. On top of students getting credits and experience, there's an added bonus for the staff they work with, as the students can hop in as substitutes or for future positions in yet another market that has struggled with shortages. We can get to know the students and find the best fit. So like if I'm looking for a first grade teacher next year, I might say, well, you know what, actually I got to know this student and I want to interview this person for this job. It has helped me a lot. I um, have a one and a half year old at home and so if I need to be out with a sick child, I know that my class is in good hands. Uh, my practicum student has been in my room. She knows how it operates. She knows where everything is. It's something students are happy about and not just the ones in college. Anytime my practicum student is in the hallways, my students are always saying, hi, when are you coming back to the room? Like having those relationships across other classrooms throughout the school is super helpful to make kids feel welcome and like they belong. I love it, it's fun. <laughs> so come on out for elementary, <laughs> that's it. <laughs> in West Fargo, Kellen Harmon, Valley News Live. Hmm. The partnership also allows college students to earn two degrees at once, one for elementary education and another in human development and family science. Still to come this Friday morning, an injured athlete's homecoming just in time for Christmas. And people in Brainerd, Minnesota are promising to make it a big one. Yeah, we've got that special story. And up next, weather to plan out your day. It's a first alert weather day on your Friday. You want to stick around and hear all those details from meteorologists.